Hey everybody, so to continue with April's theme on growth, we are going to discuss a certain section of growth. So as humans, we have three different parts to us. We have our body, our soul, and our spirit. Now, a lot of people don't really realize that they have three different parts that make up themselves, but we do, so we can grow in those three areas. Now, the body, the first one, we don't really have control over that. You know, we're going to grow in different directions, and then we're going to stop growing. And <laughs> that's just how it works. You can't, like, do a lot to make yourself get taller if you've already stopped growing. So that one we're not really going to touch on. But today, I just wanted to touch on the spiritual growth aspect, and then next week we'll touch on the soul growth. Um, so spiritual growth, a lot of people don't even realize that they have a spirit, but the spirit's like the most important part of who you are because it's the thing that continues after your body, after your body gives up and it's dead, it's no longer able to continue on this earth. Your spirit will continue and it will go to one of two places. It will either go to heaven or to hell. There's no other options. There's no reincarnation. There's no, you just die and that's it. Okay. You're going to either heaven or to hell. And so that's why spiritual growth is so important. And a lot of people don't realize that. So today, um, I've got a lot of different scriptures that I want to share with you. But one of them comes from 2 Corinthians 10. And it is out of verse 3. Starting in verse 3. And it says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all the disobedience when your obedience is so fulfilled. So that's explaining to us that even though we have flesh, we have like our bodies, we do not operate like as Christ followers if you're a Christ follower you should not just be um, living out of your flesh and out of your body going after those desires but you may have noticed throughout different times of your life you may have felt like you've been attacked in different ways and maybe it was through your health maybe your health came under attack you had, you got some kind of disease or something maybe you've been attacked financially maybe you've just been attacked by people they didn't like you, um, said horrible things about you, things that weren't even true. But this is spiritual warfare going on. And spiritual warfare begins in the spirit realm of our lives. And it eventually makes its way into like the soul and the body part of us. So whenever you're experiencing health problems, financial problems, um, relational issues, different things like that, you're being attacked spiritually. So as spiritual beings, you know, we can't war against these things, these health issues and different things in the flesh. We have to go to war spiritually, and that's what I'm going to teach you guys today. This is a huge part of spiritual growth is being able to do war spiritually, spiritual warfare. And um, with this, I have, I have a list of 13 different scriptures that I speak out loud over my life and over my family's life daily because I have truthfully been being attacked for quite a while now um, with a lot of different health issues and then with financial things and I know that it's spiritual attacks. And one reason that I can prove that it's spiritual attacks is because after I, you know, after I realized, after it clicked, it's like, you know, this isn't just things happening and all this stuff is happening. There's something going on deeper spiritually here. And so I made this list that I'm going to share with you guys and um, with it, I started reading it every day, like I said, and things have changed drastically. Um, my health has gotten a lot better, and money has just begun to pour in. Different things have opened up as they needed to, and the, the um, spiritual warfare, the like heaviness and stuff that I've been feeling has lifted because now I'm fighting back. And that's the only way that you're going to grow spiritually is if you take a stand and you've got to fight back. You can't just let this stuff keep coming and attacking you because you're never going to grow spiritually. You're just always going to be like, you know, you're always going to feel defeated because you're defeated when you don't fight back. 
And like I said, we war spiritually because these things start in the spiritual realm and you've got to get to the root of it to cut it out. So when you war spiritually, you have like one huge main weapon that you need to use. And that is, of course, um, the Word of God, which I've got right here, which I read out of a little bit earlier. And if you read in Ephesians 6, it says to take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So the sword of the Spirit, when you read the, the words that are written in the Bible, in the Holy Bible, you are yielding a sword and you are cutting to pieces these demonic evil forces that are trying to attack you. So that is why this list that I have of these verses is so powerful and it's so extremely important. You can use these lists. I will put it up online and put links so you can use these verses to speak over your family and over yourself. And if you have others that you feel are pertinent, then please do so, do and use those as well. Um, so when you're speaking these verses, I'm gonna go ahead and start reading them for you soon, but when you're speaking these out, you wanna speak with confidence. You're a child of God, and if you're not a child of God, you know, ask Jesus into your heart. He's, he, he died to save us, he's our savior. So um, when you ask him into your heart, and then you have this word that you can start speaking, the words that are written in this, the Bible, then Jesus is able to send out his angels to come and fight your battles, which is what you'll read in some of these scriptures. And you know, you don't have to do this alone anymore. You don't have to be attacked constantly. You have something now to, to help you fight. So what I'm going to do, these verses that I'm reading, they're all about warfare and um, it's just, it's making notice to the enemy that, hey, I know that you're trying to attack me, but I'm not going to take it. I have my weapons and I've got my armor on and I'm fighting back. And I'm just speaking out into the air. I'm just speaking out. That's all I'm doing to fight back, but I'm speaking out words that are written in the Bible. and. Um, I'm letting God know, hey, I know that you're my savior and I know that you're gonna take care of me, so do what you do best. So let's just go ahead and I'm gonna go through these, all right? So we got Deuteronomy 20, verse one. When you go to war against your enemies and see horses and chariots and an army greater than yours, do not be afraid of them because the Lord your God who brought you up out of Egypt will be with you. Ezekiel 25, 17. I will carry out great vengeance on them and punish them in my wrath. Then they will know that I am the Lord when I take vengeance on them. Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon forged against you will prevail, and you will refute every tongue that accuses you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and this is their vindication from me, declares the Lord. Proverbs 26, 2. Like a flitting sparrow or a fluttering swallow, an undeserved curse goes nowhere. Ephesians 6, 10 through 19. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you'll be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, Stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, with your feet fitted with the readiness of the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, which is, um, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the Lord's people. And then we have... Psalms 109, two through seven. For people who are wicked and deceitful have opened their mouths against me. They have spoken against me with lying tongues, with words of hatred they surround me. They attack me without cause. In return for my friendship, they accuse me, but I am a man of prayer. They repay me evil for good and hatred for my friendship. Appoint someone evil to oppose my enemy. Let an accuser stand at his right hand. When he is tried, let him be found guilty that his prayers may condemn him. Psalms 57, 6, they spread a net for my feet. I was bowed down in distress. They dug a pit in my path, but they have fallen into it themselves. Psalms 37, 1 through 11, do not fret because of those who are evil or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pastures. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. 
Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him and He will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret, it leads only to evil. For those who are evil will be destroyed, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. A little while longer and the wicked will be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found, but the meek will inherit the land and enjoy peace and prosperity. Psalms 138.7 Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With your right hand you save me. Psalms 35, 1-9 Contend, Lord, with those who contend with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take up shield and armor. Arise and come to my aid. Brandish spear and javelin against those who pursue me. Say to me, I am your salvation. May those who seek my life be disgraced and put to shame. May those who plot my ruin be turned back in dismay. May they be like shaft before the wind, with the angel of the Lord driving them away. May their path be dark and slippery, with the angel of the Lord pursuing them. Since they hid their net from me without cause, and without cause dug a pit for me, may ruin overtake them by surprise. May the net they hid entangle them. May they fall into the pit to their ruin. Then my soul will rejoice in the Lord and delight in his salvation. Exodus 23, verse 20. See, I am sending an angel ahead of you to guard you along the way to bring you to the place I have prepared. Psalms 40, 13 through 14. Be pleased to save me, Lord. Come quickly, Lord, to help me. May all who want to take my life be put to shame and confusion. May all who desire my ruin be turned back in disgrace. And the last one is the whole chapter of Psalms 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. Surely He will deliver me from the snare of the fowl and from the noisome pestilence. He will cover me with His feathers, and under His wings I will take refuge. His truth will be my shield and buckler. I will not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand will fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand, but it will not come nigh me. Only with mine eyes will I behold and see the reward of the wicked, because I have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, my habitation. There shall no evil befall to me. Neither will any plague him nigh my dwelling, for he will keep his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. In their hands they will bear me up, lest I dash my foot against a stone. I will tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent I will trample underfoot. Because I have set my love upon him, therefore he will deliver me. He will set me on high, because I know his name. I will call upon him, and he will answer me. He will be with me in trouble, and deliver me and honor me with long life. He will satisfy me and show me his salvation. So, those are the warring scriptures that I have been using every day for probably about a month now. And, and a lot of these scriptures, you know, it talks about the people that have been speaking wrongly and accusing wrongly and um, cursing and digging pits and different things like that. And yes, the enemy does use people to do that, but you're not, you're not speaking these verses to the people. You're not wishing curses or things upon them. You're speaking to destroy the plans of the enemy against your life. You're speaking against those pits that he's trying to dig for you to fall in. You're speaking against the stuff that he's trying to do to destroy you. And if things, um, you know, if there are people that are doing those things with you, you know, you don't speak wrongly against them. You pray for them to see the light. You pray for them to come to God, to come to Christ. But you do make war against the enemy who may be using those people to harm you or to distract you or to hurt you. So spiritual growth, it's intense. It's not um, easy because when you fight, the enemy wants to fight harder, but you just have to stay strong and continue to just speak the word of God, to speak it over your situation, to look for scriptures that speak directly to what it is that you're facing and just speak life into your life and speak life over your situations. If, if things seem dark, if they seem gloomy or hard, speak life over them. Speak the word of life, which is the word of God, over your situation and over your life. And you will see a transformation. You have to do something. You have to make a stand. You have to, as it said when we were reading Ephesians 6, it says, And after you've done everything to stand, stand firm then. Keep on fighting until you've made a victory, until you've made it to the next level. 
and then you will feel great. You'll be like, yes, you know, I defeated this thing with the help of God, with the power of the word of God, and now I don't have to be beat down in that area anymore. You know, this is spiritual growth. This is growing spiritually, and this is going to have a big impact on your body and your soul. So I encourage you guys, you know, try this out. Speak these verses. Try it out for a week, two weeks. See what happens. See if there's any difference in your life. And if it is, let me know. Okay? If there's not, then I'll pray with you. All right? You guys have a blessed one. See you later.